Hey, so today we're gonna be making an animation like this. Uh, the point of this video is to show you how to break splines or lines or curves based on a very art directable attribute. So we want it very controllable of a fall off using a noise or anything else. Cause sometimes you don't want it, you know, physically accurate. You may want um, to drive it with an animation or anything like that. And so today we're gonna go over exactly how to set this up, breaking lines inside of Houdini is needlessly complicated and I didn't find a lot of tutorials for this so that's why we're making this today. Let's get started. I have all these because these are my previous attempts. So let's lay down a grid and let's set it to two by two because we need a little bit more space. Let's move it in the negative Z actually in the negative two. So there we go, and then let's do a scatter. Let's put in some points, say like 15, and let's ray, ray these points to the grid using minimum distance. And then um, there's two ways we can do this next step. One is just doing this, IDX is PT num. The other way, Oops. The other way is with an enumerate node, which is cool. Um, and the nice thing about this node is um, you can see what it's doing here. The nice th the same thing. But the nice thing is like if you have a name attribute or something else, it'll take care of the indices of whatever array or whatever string. Starting from zero, it'll start the count from zero. So it's actually really useful. Um, but here we're just going to ray it to the grid. And what we want to do is we're going to grab these two guys. So get rid of that and just all down the output to merge. We're going to add polygons by group, say IDX, IDX, if I can type. And now, uh, and the reason this works is because each the way it works is each point has similar IDX. So like this is IDX say zero and this is IDX zero. And because they match, the add soft is gonna take matching attributes and glue them together and make the primitive in between them. So that's how that works. And we need to resample to make more points. We're gonna take these two guys, merge them together, all drag down, mask from geometry we're going to mask from the grids onto the lines because we want to pin those points closest to the grid. We don't want, we want to pin those to the grid. So let's do that with this. We can visualize using this knob here. And there we go. We can see that it's working and we want to group those. So I'm going to lay down a wrangle and just say mask is greater than say 0.9 and then group pin. I like to call my pin group just pin because it's simple. And then vellum configure hair. And then the pin points, we would just want to say pin. The collision, we're going to use this. And then finally vellum solver will give us the actual solve. And there you go. Now, there's three things you need for vellum to break. There's a convert line SOP. There's the breaking threshold attributes. And then finally, there's the group broken that we need to configure. So let's go over all those. So you'll see we have 15 primitives here, one for each curve. If you lay down a convert line, this is required for breaking with hair with vellum because it has to split up each primitive. And so you can see what it's doing. It's adding more primitives. It's adding. Uh, so if I select this primitive, it's one for the entire curve. If I select the primitive here on the convert line, you can see it's highlighting just that one particular slab. Um, if I highlight two, you can see it's two primitives selected. So each section of the curve has, has a new primitive. 
very useful in this case. So the problem, I don't know why this happens, but for some reason, when you do the vellum hair, it actually creates more points. Uh, and so we're gonna have to figure out a way to work around it. It's really unfortunate. So um, let's do that. So let's let's actually just copy our enumerate guy we made before. Let's put it down here before the convert line, just to make sure. And this is gonna create an IDX for every point, every new point now. It doesn't matter if we overwrite it because we're not using it for anything else. Um, if you want to call it something else, you can. But in my case, we're not, because it doesn't matter. And so uh, we have that enumerate. We have the convert line. And then we need to uh, break this. So you need a convert line. You need the breaking threshold. I'm going to make it 1. I'm making it 1 because anything over that threshold is going to break. So if you have a stretch distance of 1 unit in space, it'll break after it reaches one unit and likely it's not gonna stretch that much. So we're safe at leaving that threshold at one. Um, any, again, anything above this number is gonna break. So um, if you have stress test, anything above one is gonna break. So um, we're gonna leave it at one. You can even set it to 10,000, it doesn't matter. Um, and so we need an attribute to actually drive the breaking. So we're gonna say adjust attribute float. We're gonna say F, we're gonna visualize it. And we're gonna say noise. And then we're gonna shrink this in a bit so that uh, we get very defined points as to where the noise is gonna be. I'm gonna lower this number and then I'm gonna turn on the animation. This is just so we can get some variation over time and anything that's purple is not going to be broken. Anything that's nearing red is going to be ended up broken, depending on how you define it. So let's bring this into SOPS and actually break stuff. So inside of here, I'm going to lay down a pop wrangle. Input set to myself first and foremost. It's very important for VEX. Don't know why that's not default. So I actually have set it up to default. And then we're gonna actually, I forgot to make a null here. And this is gonna be two dots. We're gonna copy that null. And then we're gonna paste it inside of this parameter to reference it. And all we're gonna do is you could say float f is point one. could say this. I don't think this is going to work. Yeah, no, it's not really working all that great. And again, that's just because uh, the point number changes when we get back into the vellum, vellum hair. So we have to do this crazy workaround just to get vellum to work. So um, the point number is not going to work. So we have to use, we have to get the point number. And I'm going to make a tutorial on finding attribute val, but this is the function you'll need for this. I'm just going to type it out really quick. Okay, so find attribute val grabs points, primitives, vertices with similar attributes or identical attributes, I should say, with an integer or a string. And so in this case, because there's only one point, it's just going to spit out one point. Um, but it can also do an array. And again, I'm going to do a tutorial on this, but uh, we have that F and let's check it now. It should look much better. It looks almost identical, but I know this is working. So if we say if F is greater than 0.8, broken is one and this guy is magic this is what actually breaks it so group broken we're doing it on the points on the point level i spent hours on this trying to figure out the best way to break it and i used constraints at first and blah blah, blah. and it's just this it's just group broken and that's all you need and now they just break and that's perfect that's exactly what we wanted so i hope this tutorial is helpful i'm 
kind of making this tutorial just because I needed it online. There's not a lot of tutorials for breaking constraints and things like that. And so I just wanted to make it for myself and hopefully this really helps someone else out there. All right. Thanks guys for watching. Hope you have a great day and talk to you guys later. Bye.